In the dead of the night, something is afoot. Two feet, in fact, and a jump. Westpac Little Ripper Group and myself are sacrificing sleep to track down some roving ruse or the occasional wandering wallaby. We're not fussy. Table, check. Carpet, check. Two unmanned aerial vehicles, check, check. I'm out with the same team behind the slick shark spotter drones I've covered before. With the bushfires um, and the animals that have been affected, um, we've now taken the amazing technology that we've had on the beaches for the last three years and we've put it over the bushland. Now they've turned nocturnal and their new targets are considerably cuddlier creatures. We can see kangaroo, kangaroo, kangaroo. You can see that they really stand out against the background. We're filming before sunrise during the coldest part of the day, so the new thermal cameras fixed to the drones can work properly. As well as being able to survey huge swathes of land in the blink of an airborne eye, the drone's thermal capabilities can help in other ways. A thermal signature makes animals much easier to see at night, their natural internal temperatures making them visible even in the most dense of treetop canopies. And the different individual temperatures of the animals can be recorded, therefore making them more distinct between species. Different animals show up at different temperatures, they have different fur that insulates them, so it's just a matter of picking them out, but you can see quite easily there's a whole lot of kangaroos in this field. We fly over an area and there's a kangaroo that seems to be moving a little bit differently, not as efficient as it usually would, or not normal movement patterns, then we'll focus on that. Um, and if, they're, if we bring the drone a little bit closer and they don't move or they don't scare, um, or a, a human gets closer to them and they don't move or don't scare, then we know that something is probably uh, wrong with its health and we'll focus on identifying that and passing that on to rescuers. Dr Grant Hamilton from Queensland University of Technology is also using drones to monitor koalas. He's devised an algorithm to automatically detect animals in the outback using computer vision. Uh, on the right hand side uh, we have the artificial intelligence algorithm working and on the left hand side we have the thermal imagery. It's a koala. Initially it was falsely detecting kangaroos, for example, as koalas. We were even detecting um, humans and even hot car bonnets. Um, but that's the whole point, that you go back and you retrain the algorithm. So the algorithm gets better and better and better, to the point now where we're better than humans are at detecting koalas. All of the algorithms that have been developed to date is processing back at a university. So there's no in-field um, processing. So we're now going to work with the universities and the institutions, take the data sets and the algorithms that they've started to develop, layer it over our technology, which enables us to do these surveys at night in the field and get real-time data back. And that's the key. Someone who knows a thing or two about the state of Australian animals is Dr Michael Payne. When I first started here 20 years ago, we admitted just three koalas in the whole year, and last year we admitted almost 600 koalas. Okay. He sees real value in an up-to-date digital census. These surveys are done intermittently, maybe every 10 years, and in many areas they're not done at all, it's just estimates. Um, technology such as drones, you know, using those thermal cameras can mean large areas can be covered in short periods of time, you know, relatively cheaply to get, you know, that, that, those numbers so we know how many koalas are there, and, and that makes all the difference, you know, only if we know what's there can we manage what's there and be able to make, you know, decisions about the future. As well as the fires and the underlying issue of drought, chlamydia is a huge problem putting koalas under threat. So staff at Corumbin have been using tech of their own to help diagnose the disease. We can take a swab, we can use this little little unit here called the Genie 3 and it will detect whether there's chlamydia or not from that swab within 25 minutes. So it's an amazing technology that we can actually take out into the field which makes all the difference to us being able to start treatment appropriately and at the end of the treatment, you know, decide whether we've been successful with the treatment or not. A lot of work remains to be done and in fact it's the very beginning 
of the important work to find out what's left. The other thing to consider though is that this is just one bushfire season and Australia has bushfires regularly. So unless we get a good count now, we're not going to be able to get any idea of what happens next time.